Okay, let's look at an object moving in a circle. So here I have a circle, and here's my object. And let's say this has a radius of, uh, some, some radius, that we'll, we'll pick a value in just a second. So imagine that this object is moving around in a circle like this. I'll use my pen so you can see it. At a, with a constant speed. Okay, so the, the, that means the magnitude of the velocity is constant. And we call this circular motion. And we want to find the acceleration. So let's jump back for a second and say, hey, what's the, what's the definition of acceleration? Well, we can do that. A is defined as the change in velocity divided by the change in time. I know this is the definition that we normally use in algebraic physics. Of course, you could take the limit as this gets really small. We mostly dealt with constant acceleration, but this is not constant acceleration. So let's just go ahead and pick some values and look at the acceleration of an object moving around a circle here, and then we'll make it more complicated. So let's say it, it's moving this way. And so it starts right here, and it has a velocity going this direction. I'll say V1. And then up here, it's up here moving with the velocity v2. And, and I'm going to say the, the speed is the same. So the magnitude of velocity v1 is equal to the magnitude of velocity v2. And let's say that's 5 meters per second. And then I'm also going to say this has a radius r. Uh, I'm just picking stuff here. r equals 4 meters. So I can write v1 and v2 as vectors. So let's call this the x-axis and that the y-axis. Then v1 is in the y, the positive y direction. So I can write this as the vector 0, 5, 0 meters per second. And I'm using this ordered pair notation for vectors. So it's the x component, the y component, the z component. It just works better in Python that way, and I'm a huge Python fan. So now I can write v2 as a vector. v2 is going to be the vector 5, 0, zero because that one's meters per second because that one's moving in the x direction so here i am moving in the y direction and then a little bit later i'm up here moving in the x direction uh, but the magnitude of v1 if i take the square root of zero squared plus five squared plus zero squared i get five if i take the square root of five squared plus zero squared plus zero squared i get five so these both have the same magnitude but they're in different directions so that means that i can find the acceleration the acceleration is going to be the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So it's going to be v2, the final velocity, minus the initial velocity over delta t. And I actually can do this v2 minus v1. So if I take v2 and I subtract v1, I subtract the components. So I have 5 minus 0, I get 5. I have 0 minus 5, I get negative 5. And then 0 minus 0 is 0 meters per second. And I divide that by delta t. But, but what about the time? What's the time? Well, if, if I imagine this path, it's going along that path right there. And I say, well, if, if I stretch that path out into a straight line, and I call that the direction S, I could say in one dimension, V is delta S over delta T, right? Not X, it's just some X dimension. So it's moving along that path. And I can say that as a scalar direction. And in this case, I know how far this is. That is one-fourth the way around the circle. And what's the, direct, the distance all the way around the circle? Well, it would be 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle. So this is going to be equal to 2 pi r over 4, right, because it's a fourth of the way, and then divided by delta t. That's the magnitude of the velocity, which I know. But I can use this to find delta t. So let's solve this for delta t. I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t, divide both sides by v, and I get delta t equals 2 pi r over 4 v. That's right, delta t, yeah. So let's put it in my values. I have 2 pi. r is 4 meters. I said that right there. 4 divided by 4 times the velocity of 5. So I get 2 pi over 5, the 4 is canceled, is delta t. So with that, I can put that delta t in down here. 
So now that I know delta t, that's just a number, this is gonna be equal to five, negative five, zero, divided by two pi, divided that by five, so it's like multiplying by five. So I get the acceleration vector. Let's just put that in our calculator. That's gonna be 25. It's gonna be 25 divided by two pi, negative 25 divided by two pi. So I just need to do, let's do, I did five times five is 25. Can you see that? Okay. So I have 25 divided by two, and then I divide that by pi, and I get, I can't see that, 3.99. So I get 3.99, negative 3.99, right, because that one's gonna be negative 25, zero meters per second squared. So what does that vector look like? Well, you notice it has an equal x and y component with the magnitude. So if I, and that's the average acceleration over that whole time interval, because actually it does change, but let's just draw this in the middle. It would be a going down the same amount it goes over, so that'd be a 45 degree angle, so it's right towards the center of the circle. Okay, now what if I redid this problem? What if I went from here to there? Well, what I'm gonna get is my x velocity is gonna go from five to zero, so I'm gonna get a negative x velocity change in x, and my y is gonna go from uh, zero to a negative number, so it's gonna have a negative change in y, And I, but the values are gonna be the same. I'm still going from five to zero, or five to five, or whatever. Five, zero to five, yeah. So I'm gonna get the same magnitude. It's just gonna change the arrows. And if you did that, you would see that the acceleration would be in the negative x direction and the negative y direction and have the same magnitude, so right there. If I did it going from here to there, now I'm going from negative, I mean, I'm going from zero x to negative x, so my x component's gonna be negative, the change in x, the change in vx. And the y component's going from negative to zero, so it's actually gonna be a positive y component. So if I did that, it would look like this. And then finally, if I did it over here, I would get that. So you'll see that the magnitude of this acceleration is the same for all four parts, and it's always pointing towards the center. But we have this problem. I can't find the acceleration because the acceleration, even if the magnitude's the same, the direction keeps changing. So let's just solve for the magnitude of the acceleration as an expression for any particular point. I don't wanna go from here to there because that's just the average acceleration. It actually changes over that time, okay? Okay, so let's do that. Let's do some little, a little bit of math here. So here's my circle. And I'm, I'm not gonna use numbers. I'm just gonna say this has a radius r. And then I'm gonna start with the velocity right here, v1. And then it's gonna be a little bit later, right there, v2. And so there I have this is going to carve out a portion of the circle that's not a fourth, it's just some, it's just some ratio of the, of the circle. And we can call this angle, let's just call this angle theta for right now. So again, I wanna say the acceleration is delta V over delta T, but I, I would just wanna find the magnitude. So I just need to find the magnitude of delta V, and I need to find delta T. So let's work on delta t first. So if I know this is moving with some constant velocity, I'll say the magnitude of v1 is equal to the magnitude of v2, and I'm just gonna call that v. That's just the velocity. It doesn't have an arrow over it because it's not a vector. That's just the velocity. So if that's the case, I can say v is delta s over delta t, where delta s is this part right here. That's delta s. And if I go all the way around the circle, then I would have s would be 2 pi r. But I'm, I'm only going around part of it. So if I have theta measured in radians, then if that's the angle theta and this is the radius r, then the length of this arc length right here, I could say delta s is going to be r theta. That's the length of that arc length. So if theta is two pi all the way around, I'd get two pi r, which is the circumference of a circle. If it's the fourth of the way around, I'd have theta is pi over two pi over four, or pi over two, and I'd get uh, what, what I had before. Okay, so that's my s. 
So I can plug that in over here and I get uh, V equals R theta over delta T. And I can solve that for delta T. Delta T is R theta over V. And I, I should probably call this delta theta, but I'm just calling it theta just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. Um, that's like that. Okay, now let's try to see if we can find the magnitude of this velocity V. So remember, I am mean, sorry, delta V. So let's just look at V1 and V2. I'm gonna draw them right here. Here's V1 and here's V2. I'm gonna put it right here. And they have the same magnitude. And you'll notice that if theta goes to zero, they'll be in the same direction. And it takes a little bit of geometry, but I hope you can see that this angle right here is also theta. It's the same as that. And as this goes down, that decreases, that decreases, so that's true. So that means that this would be delta V, the vector. Now, that is a triangle. If theta is small, I'll write that out because it's important. If theta is very, very small, I'll say very, very, I did that wrong. Okay, but let's say it's very, it's less than small. It's much less than small, that's what I said. Then this delta V, this looks like a part of an arc length just like that. Of course, I could say the length of that arc would be the magnitude of the velocity times the theta. It doesn't matter that I'm dealing with velocity instead of distance, I could still say that. And this is a shortcut across there, but as theta gets really small, then the shortcut across is the same as the arc length. So I can write uh, the following. I could say delta V is gonna be V times theta, right? Because here's the length of one side. That's like the radius of this velocity circle and the arc length of the velocity circle is delta V. And if theta is small, the arc length is delta V. Okay, I know that's tough. So that means we can put this, A is delta V. And we're talking about magnitudes now, delta T. So delta V is gonna be V theta, and then delta T is gonna be this, R theta divided by V, so I get the V up there. The thetas cancel, and I get V squared over R. And this is what we call centripetal acceleration. So this says that if I'm moving in a circle, the faster I go, the greater the acceleration. The smaller the circle, the greater the acceleration. So, you know, you can think of that like, if if I go faster, then my delta V magnitudes can be bigger. And also, I'm gonna take less time to move along this path. And so since the acceleration is inversely proportional to time, that's gonna increase the acceleration. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have two ways to increase acceleration. That's why we have a V squared. If I just decrease the radius, if I make radius smaller, then delta T is gonna get smaller and that's gonna make the acceleration go up. But I'm only doing that with factor one. And that's just kind of a plausible solution for why this is the case. But let's check the units here. So if I have velocity, uh, so A is gonna be, I'm gonna just write the units, meters per second, quantity squared divided by meters. Well, that's gonna be equal to meters squared per second squared divided by meters, and I get meters per second squared. So that is the correct units for acceleration, that's good. But this is just the magnitude of the acceleration. The direction is towards the center of the circle. We call this centripetal acceleration. I'm writing it out. I don't know if you can tell that, but I am. Acceleration. And so we say AC is V squared over R. And that's the speed it's moving in the circle, that's the radius of the circle, and that's the magnitude of the acceleration. The direction is towards the center of the circle. Now, this actually means something. If you look at this word, centripe, no, centri, centri this means center. And then this means pointing. So this is the center pointing acceleration. I don't wanna talk about it a lot right now, we can talk about it later, but don't get this confused with the other term, centrifugal acceleration. 
Centrifugal acceleration is centrifugal. Fugal means fleeing. So this is an acceleration pointing away. And this is actually what we call a fake force. And it, it can be very dangerous, um, but it can also be useful in some cases. But this is not this is not a force. This is the result of a force, right? If I have F net equals MA, the acceleration could be centripetal acceleration because it's moving in a circle. In this case, it could not be an ex that kind of acceleration. This is something that we'd use in cases where we want to pretend like we're not rotating. Okay, and that's why it's uh, a fake force. And it can be useful, and I will talk about that later, but I just want to point out that these are different things. Okay, this is more, way more complicated than what you think, and so I'd just be careful using this. If you don't know what you're doing, just don't do it. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. But that's how you can derive uh, this, the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration for an object moving in a circle. We call that centripetal acceleration.